There. How do you think the room looks? Fabulous! I told you it would. I wish you could always have it like this. That lamp looks divine there, and those chairs are just the right colour. I told you purple would look well in here. Uh, suppose Harold comes back. He is not coming back till tomorrow morning. Yeah, I know, but, uh, but suppose he comes back tonight. Hmm? He's mad about his antiques. <sighs> What do you think he'll say if he goes into his room and finds out that we've stolen everything? Don't dramatize. We haven't stolen all his furniture. Hmm. Just three chairs, the sofa, <laughs> the table, the lamp, the bowl, yeah. and the vase of flowers. That's all. <laughs> and, the, and the Buddha. That's more valuable than anything. Oh, do stop worrying, darling. Really. Uh, well, you don't know, Harold. He won't even let anyone touch his antiques. Look, we'll put everything back as soon as Mr. Bamberger leaves. Now stop being dreary. Uh, well, <sighs> frankly, I don't think we should have done it. I mean, anyway, Harold or no? Why not, for heaven's sake? Yeah, well, the room looks divine now. Just, yes. just, just, just look at it. Oh. Darling, <laughs> Georg Bamberger is a multi-millionaire. He's lived his life against this sort of furniture. Oh. Our few stolen bits aren't going to impress him. He's coming tonight to see the work of an unknown sculptor. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if you ask me, I think it would look much better to him if he found me exactly as I really am. Uh, a poor artist. It might touch his heart. Hmm? It might, but it certainly won't impress Daddy. Oh. Remember, he's coming too. Hmm. As if I could forget. <laughs> Why on earth you had to invite your monster father tonight, I can't think. Oh, not again. Uh, well, it's too bloody much. <sighs> if he's going to be persuaded that I'm a fit husband for you just by watching a famous collector buy some of my work, uh, then, then he doesn't deserve to have me as a son-in-law. He just wants some proof you can earn your own living. Hmm. And what if Bamberger doesn't like my work? He hmm? will, darling. Just stop worrying. I, I can't. Get me a whiskey. Oh. Uh, I've got a foreboding. It's all going to be disaster. An A1, copper bottomed, 24 carat disaster. The trouble with you is you're what Daddy calls a DD. A what? Determined defeatist. Oh, the more I hear about your Daddy, the more I hate him. I loathe military men anyway. <laughs> And in any case, he's bound to hate me. Look, darling, all you've got to do is stand up to him. Daddy's only a bully when he thinks people are afraid of him. Well, I am. You haven't even met him. Uh, that doesn't make any difference. I'm a complete physical coward. <laughs> he, he's going to smell it on my breath. Don't be Nicholas, here. Oh, thank you. What can he do to you? Uh, for one thing, he can refuse to let me marry you. Oh, that's Sweet! Oh. oh, I suppose so. Mm. I like you in red. It goes with your hair. Oh, straighten your scarf. You look sloppy, Pegs. Mm. <laughs> well, you look divine. Really? I mean it. I've never seen you look so lovely. <laughs> Tell me, Brim. Mm. Have there been many before me? Oh, thousands. Seriously? Seriously? None. What about that girl in the photo? Ah, she lasted about three months. When? Uh, two years ago. Oh, what was her name? Clea. What was she like? Uh, she was a, a painter. Uh, very honest, uh, very clever, mm. and, and just about as cosy as a steel razor blade. <laughs> when was the last time you saw her? I told you. Two years ago. Well, why did you still have her photograph in your bedroom drawer? It was just there, that's all. Give me a kiss. <laughs> no one in the world kisses like you. Tell me something. Hmm. Did you like it better with her or me? Like what? Sexy pegs. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> uh, look, people will be here in a minute. Uh, put a record on. It had better be something for your father. Uh, what does he like? He doesn't like anything except military marches. <laughs> I might have guessed. Uh, wait, uh, I think I've got something. Uh, it, that last record on the shelf, the orange cover, it's called 
marching and murdering with Sousa. Something. <laughs> this one? Uh, that's it. The band of the Cold Stream Guards. Mm, ideal. Put it on. Uh, how do you switch on? Uh, that last knob on the left. Uh, that's it. Uh, be sure to plug it in. Uh, let us pray. <clears throat> oh, God, let this evening go all right. Let Mr. Bamberger like my sculpture and buy some. Let Carol's monster father like me. And let my neighbor Harold Gorringe never find out that we borrowed his precious furniture behind his back. Amen. Blast! We've blown a fuse. It, it must have been that bloody record player. Where's the box? In the hall. Have you any candles? I don't think so. Well, where are the matches? D they should be on the drinks table. No, uh, try on that bloody record player. Oh, nothing here. Damn, 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 damn. Oh, would you believe it? All right, I'm, I'm coming. Hello? Hello! Oh, I'm fine. It's just fine. You? Darling? Look in the bedroom, will you? I haven't finished in here yet. Oh, I just remembered that there are some fuses in the bedroom, in that drawer where you found the photograph. Go and get one, will you? I don't think there are. I, I didn't see any there. Don't argue, just look! All right, give your heavy sword. I'm sorry. I'm sure there are some there, but you just must have missed them. What about the matches? We'll have to mend it in the dark, that's all. Mm. Do hurry. Oh, God, how dreary. <laughs> Hello. Oh, well, well, well. Uh, uh, no, I'm fine. Just fine. You? Oh, that's good. I'm fine. 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 Stop saying what? <laughs> Darling? Carol! <coughs> Clay, what on earth are you doing here? I thought you were in Finland. But you've hardly been gone six weeks. Uh, where are you speaking from? The air terminal? Uh, oh, well, no, that's not a good idea tonight. I, I'm afraid I'm, I'm terribly busy and I just can't get out of it. It's business. There's nothing here except your dreary socks. I told you. <laughs> Try the other drawers. Oh. <laughs> Look, I, I can't talk right now. Can I call you tomorrow? Where will you be? Look, I, I told you no, Clea, not tonight. I, I know it's just around the corner, that, that's not the point. Look, the situation has changed. Something's happened. I can't see it! Okay, I've got to go. Has it got to do with what? Well, yes, of course it has. You can't just expect things to stay frozen, can you? I can't find anything. How haven't we any matches at all? Just stop wailing! <laughs> oh, no, not you. Uh, no, I'll call you tomorrow. Goodbye. Who was that? Just a drum. Did you find the fuse? I can't find anything in this. We've got to get some matches. Now, try the pub. Is that you, Miss Furnival? Mr. Miller? Yes. <laughs> yes. Have your lights gone too? Yes. <laughs> it could have been a blackout. I don't think so. The street lights are all in front. I saw them from the landing. Yeah, then it must have been the master fuse box. Well, where's it's that? Can... It's over there. It's all sealed up. No one but the electricity people can touch it. They have to come round themselves and repair it. It's under the floor over there. Well, you have to get them. Quick. How? Phone 
Find them, of course. Don't be so futile. They want to come at this time of night, surely. Don't be such a D.D., darling. Try. <laughs> <laughs> Well, would you by any chance have a match on you? Uh, no, I, I, I'm afraid I haven't, Mr. Miller. So improvident of me, and I'm so absolutely terrified of the dog. <laughs> Darling, uh, this is Miss Furnival from upstairs. Uh, Miss Furnival, Miss Melkett. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? <laughs> Isn't this prideful? <laughs> Perhaps we can put Bamberger off. Hmm? Well, didn't you say he's dying out and then coming on here after? Yes. So he can't be reached. Flip! London Electricity Board, please. Night service. Look, miss, I'm sure it's in the book, but I'm afraid I can't see. Uh, no, no, there's no need to apologize. No, no I'm not blind. I, I just can't see. We've had a fuse. Uh, no, I haven't caught any matches. This is an emergency. Thank you. London is staffed with imbeciles. Uh, you're so right, Mr. Miller. Uh, look, I, I don't want the number. I can't dial it. Well, have you ever tried to dial a number in the dark? I just want to be connected. Thank you. Miss <laughs> Furnival, uh, would you by any remote chance have any candles? You, I'm afraid not, Mr. Miller. <laughs> Hello, uh, operator? Uh, yes, I would like to report a main fuse at 18 Scarlatti Gardens. Uh, my name is Miller. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, all right. Hold on. Hold bloody on! If I may suggest, Harold Gorringe opposite might have some candles. Uh, he's away for the weekend, but he always leaves the key under the mat. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's a good idea. That's just the sort of practical thing he would have. Mm -hmm. Darling, uh, take this. Oh. I'll go and see. Well. <coughs> oh, I'm over here. <laughs> Give me a moment. Well, hurry up, I can see them waiting. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Bugger! Are you all right, Mr. Miller? I knew it! I bloody knew it! This is going to be the worst night of my life! Don't panic, darling! <laughs> Tonight something special then, Miss Melkin. It couldn't be more special if it tried. Oh dear, may I ask why? Have you ever heard of a German called Georg Bamberger? Indeed, yes. Isn't he the richest man in the world? Yes. <laughs> Hello. Oh. Well, he's coming here tonight. Tonight? In about 20 minutes to be exact. <laughs> and to make matters worse, he's apparently stone deaf. Oh, how extraordinary. May I ask why he's coming? He saw some photos of Brinsley's work and apparently got madly excited about it. His secretary rang up last week and asked if he could come by and see it. He's a great collector. Brin would be absolutely made if Bamberger bought a piece of him. How exciting! Oh, did break? Or oh, was? Till a moment ago. Oh dear, well, you must get some help. Do you know that thing? <laughs> <laughs> Say things like that, even in levity. Hello? Oh, oh, this is number 18, Scarlatti Gardens. I'm afraid we've had the most dreary fuse. It's what's lovingly known as the master box. We want a little man. They can't all have the fuse. Oh, please try. It's extremely urgent. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, sometime this evening, they hope. That's a lot of help. 
If they're not here to help, my dear, in my day you paid for service and you got satisfaction. <laughs> Nowadays all you get is some foreigner swearing at you. <laughs> and it only makes it worse if they think you're of the middle class. Would you like a drink? Oh, I don't drink, thank you. Uh, my father, being a Baptist minister, strongly disapproved of alcohol. Gentlemen, fast! Is anyone there? In here, Daddy Pegs! Can't you turn the light on? Damn it, I've almost knocked myself out on a damn milk bottle. We've got a fuse. Nothing's working. Oh, what a relief for life! Oh, this is my <laughs> father, Colonel Melkett, Miss Furnival. She's from upstairs. Good evening. I'm taking refuge from Mr. Miller this evening. Uh, I'm not very good in the dark. <laughs> When did this happen? About five minutes ago. The main uh, thingy just went. And where's this young man of yours? In the flat opposite. He's trying to find candles. You mean he hasn't got any? No, we can't even find the matches. I see. An O. No organization. Bad sign. Daddy, please! It could happen to any of us! Not to me. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell's that? It's some of Brixley's work. Is it by Jove? And how much does that go for? I think he's asking 50 pounds for it. My God. Uh, uh, do you like the flat, Daddy? Prince furnished it very well, hasn't he? I mean, it's rich, but not gaudy pegs. <laughs> very elegant. Good, I can see he's got proper taste. Ah, now that's what I understand by a real work of art. You can see what it's meant to be. Oh, good heavens. What is it? Nothing. It's just that that border, it so closely resembles the one that Harold Gorringe has. <laughs> Must have cost a pretty penny, what? By Jove, it's got pretty colours. Do you know Mr. Gorringe? Oh, yes, very right. excellent friends. He has such lovely things. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what? This furniture, surely. Oh, my goodness! Daddy, please! Why don't you look in there? It's Briggs' studio. There's something I particularly want you to see before he gets back. Please, have a look! Very well, Dumpling. Anything to oblige? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Miss Furnival, you're a... Bored, aren't you? I don't know. <laughs> What's this furniture doing here? It belongs to Harold Gorringe! I, I know. We've done something absolutely frightful. We've stolen all Harold's best pieces and put Bryn's horrid old bits in his room. But why? It's disgraceful. Because Brinsley's got nothing, Miss Furnival. Nothing at all. He's as poor as a church mouse. If Daddy had seen this place as it looks normally, he'd have forbidden our marriage on the spot. Mr. Gorringe wasn't there to ask, so we just took the chance. If Harold Gorringe knew that anyone had touched his furniture or his porcelain, he'd go out of his mind and ask for that boner. <laughs> it's the most precious piece he owned. It's worth hundreds of pounds. No, please, Miss Furnival, you won't give us away, will you? We're desperate, and it's only for an hour. Oh, please, please. Oh, very well, I won't betray you. Oh, thank you. But it will have to go back exactly as it was, just as soon as your father and Mr. Bamberger leave. I swear. Oh, Miss Furnival, you're an angel. Do have a drink. Oh, no, you don't. Well, have a bit of lemonade. Thank you. That I won't refuse. <laughs> not supposed to be a sculpture. It's not supposed to be. It is. And they make good garden implements. I'd like him for turning the soil. <laughs> That's not very funny, Dad. <laughs> Sorry, Dumpling. Speak as you find. I wish you wouldn't call me Dumpling. There's no point wasting this. We may need it. Don't be nervous, Miss Furnival. Bring will be here any minute with the candles. Then I'll leave, of course. I don't want to be in your way. You're not at all. Bryn? Hello? Did you find anything? 
can't find anything in this. If there are any candles in there, I don't know where they are. Did you get the electric people? They said they might send someone around later. How much later? They don't know. <laughs> What's her lookout? That's a lot of help. <laughs> Not a bloody candle in the whole house, a, a deaf millionaire to show sculpture to, and your monster father to keep happy. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> this is my father, Colonel Milken. Well, 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 well. Good evening, sir. Uh, fancy you being here all the time. Uh, you see, I'm expecting some monsters. Uh, neighbors. Some monster neighbors. Oh, uh, neighbor. Monsters. Uh, they rang up and said they might come have a look round. Well, 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 well. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> well. <laughs> Seem to be in a spot of trouble. <laughs> no, 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 not at all, sir. Just a fuse, really. Nothing. <laughs> it's not the first fuse I've found, and I dare say it won't be the last. <laughs> No matches, right? Yeah, uh, right. No B E, right? E E. Basic efficiency. Ah, uh, I wouldn't say that exactly. By that I mean the simple state of being at attention in life. Oh, hey, hey, at attention. Sorry. <laughs> Rather than at ease. Well, I'm certainly not at ease, sir. <laughs> So, what are we going to do about it? Uh, do? Don't echo me, sir. I don't like it. You don't like it. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now, look you here. This is an emergency. Anyone can see that. No one can see anything. That's the emergency. <laughs> Spare me your humor, sir, if you don't mind. Now, let's look at the situation objectively. Right? Uh, right. Good. Problem? Darkness. Solution? Light. Oh, very good, sir. Weapons, matches, candles, torches. Anything else? Uh, a set of early Christians. What did you say? <laughs> nothing, nothing, sir. Matches, torches, candles. Very good. <laughs> well, where might you find all or any of those things? I haven't the faintest idea. The pub, of course. You have a pub close by, haven't you? Yes, of course. I spend all my time there. Uh, yeah, some of my time. A, a little of my time. Ten minutes a day at the most. It won't be closed yet if you hurry. Right. Uh, thank you, sir. Your, your clarity of mind has saved the day. <laughs> well, get on with it, man. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, back in a minute. Mm, good luck, darling. Uh, thank you, my sweet. Stop that at once. Hello? Hello, is anyone there? Harold? Brinsley? It's Harold. He's back. Oh, no! The furniture. What's going on here? Uh, nothing, Harold. Uh, uh, don't go in. Uh, come in here. Yeah, we've had a fuse. It's dark. It's all over the house. Uh, have you phoned the electric people? Yes. Come in here. It's rather cozy in the dark, isn't it? <laughs> suppose so. So then, you're, you're back from your weekend. Oh, I certainly am, dear. <laughs> weekend? Some weekend. I couldn't take it anymore. It rained the whole bloody time. I feel dumped on my skibbies. <laughs> well then, uh, have a drink and, uh, and, and tell us all about it. Us? Who's here then? I am Mr. Goreed. Bernie. Taking refuge, I'm afraid. You know how I hate the dark. Blasted thing. It's beginning to go. There we are. Who 
are you? Ah, uh, uh, may I present my neighbor, Harold Gorich, uh, uh, Colonel Melkett. How do? How do you do? Uh, and this is Miss Carol Melkett, Harold Gorringe. Hello. <laughs> uh, let me take your cape, Harold. <laughs> Be careful, it's sopping wet. You've got no matches, I suppose. Would you believe it, Colonel, but I haven't. Uh, silly me. <laughs> what the devil did you do that for? Uh, I, I'm saving your wig, Colonel. You may need it later, and it's failing fast. It's all right, I've got some matches. Matches? Here we are. Ooh. I've got the right end. <laughs> hey, what was that? Uh, nothing. <laughs> uh, a draft. <laughs> no match can ever stay alight in this room. It's impossible. Cross currents. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> What's up with you? Uh, nothing. Have you been drinking? <laughs> no! <laughs> no, it's just that it's dangerous. And deeply dangerous. <laughs> we can all die in this room, actually. Die? <laughs> it's something they always warn you about in old houses. Uh, you see, the, uh, the master fuse box and the gas line are, are close together. Uh, they're down there. So, what about it? Well, electrical blowouts can damage the gas supply. Uh, they're famous for it. Uh, they do it all the time, and, and they always warn you. You've got to avoid all naked flames until they've mended. I've never heard of that. Me neither. No, oh, it's absolutely true. It's fantastically dangerous to burn a naked flame in this room, isn't it, Carol? Oh, mm. yes, mm. yes, Brain is absolutely right. In fact, they warned me about it on the phone this evening when I called them. They said, whatever you do, don't strike a match till the fuse is mended. It's dreadfully, dreadfully dangerous. You can't imagine how dreadfully. Uh, there, you see? <laughs> <laughs> then why didn't you warn me, Dumpling? Uh, I, I, I forgot. Brilliant. <laughs> we must be careful. <laughs> we certainly must. Uh, let's all have a drink. Cheer us up. Well, I must say, that certainly wouldn't come amiss. Not after the journey I've had tonight. I swear there were 35 people in that compartment if there was one. Babes in arms, toddlers, two nuns, three yapping poodles, and not a sausage to eat from Lernington to London. It's a bloody disgrace. Excuse me, I'll just go and clean up. Uh, you can do that here, Harold. Well, I must run back anyway. Do, do it later. No, I hate to keep clothes in a suitcase longer than I absolutely have to. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a priest suit. Uh, nonsense, Harold. Nonsense. We can't have you walking about in the dark. You'll knock yourself unconscious. You know how accident prone you are. Now, uh, why don't you just come in here and, and, and relax, darling? Pour Harold a drink, for God's sake. <laughs> well, you're in a bossy mood, I must say. Darkness must bring out the dominant in you. <laughs> <laughs> what will you have, Mr. Gorridge? Winnie, Vera, or Jeanette? Uh, come again? Winnie whiskey, Vera vodka, or dear old sand by Jeanette? <laughs> well, I can see you're a camp one. If it's all the same to you, I'll have a drop of Jeanette, please. And a little lime juice. <laughs> Young man, must I keep reminding you that you are in an emergency? You have a guest arriving any second. Oh, uh, I'd almost forgotten. Try the pub, try the neighbors. Try who you damn well please, sir, but get some light. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Carol, uh, can I have a word with you for a moment? I'm here. Oh, what now? Uh, please, Colonel, just uh, ex excuse us for, for just a moment. <laughs> Mr. Gorin, it's so exciting. You never guess who's coming tonight. Who? This. The Queen. <laughs> you are ridiculous. What are we going to do? I don't know. Think. The cat. This whole thing is a nightmare. So that boy touched or what? <laughs> touched? He's a lollipop. A what? <laughs> An absolute sweetie. I've known him since he came here. There's not many secrets we keep from each other, I can tell you. 
really. I'm going to have to put all of Harold's furniture back in his room right now. In the dark? But there's no other way. I can't get light till we do. Well, come on, Vernie, don't be a tease. Who is it who's coming here tonight? I'll give you a clue. It's someone with money. Money? Let me think. Carol! Look, can you just tell him it was a joke? You don't know, Carol. He can't bear anyone to touch his treasures. It's bad enough in his china shop. The things he keeps at home are absolutely sacred. Do you want him to call me a thief in front of your father? Is that what you want? Hmm? That's exactly what he'll do. Brinsley! I mean it, I'm not exaggerating. He, he can get absolutely murderous when he's upset. He becomes a, a mad killer inside ten seconds. But uh, how on earth can we do it? You can't get all that stuff out in the dark and put your own things back in without anyone knowing. It's impossible. Huh. Now who's been a DD? Hmm? Brinsley? <laughs> Brinsley, what are you two doing up there? It's no good, Colonel. You can't hear a thing up in that bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Look here. Just hold the fort, uh, serve them drinks, and keep things going. And you leave everything else to me. I'll get it all back, every piece. You can't. It's impossible. We Brinsley! No. Uh, uh, Yes, sir. I, I was just, uh, I was just getting some empty bottles to take back to the pub. <laughs> Say what you like, that boy's touched. <laughs> trust me, Donnie. Just, just trust me. You do your part, and, and I'll do mine. Get down here, Miller! Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. Help is help is definitely on the way. And hurry up, top man. Uh, Carol will get you drinks, and and if our guest should arrive, explain the situation to him. Would you like me to come with you? No, 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 no. Oh, good heavens, Harold. Why don't you just stay here and dry out those wet clothes? Good gin and lime should do wonders for you. Just want to be a minute, everyone. Bye. Well, now, drinks. It's uh, Jeanette for Mr. Gorringe, and I suppose Winnie for Daddy. And I'll have a nice glass of Vera and Tonic. I wonder if you expect to do all that in the dark. I remember the exact way I put out the bottles. It's very simple. <laughs> Look, love, let me strike a match. I'm sure it's not that dangerous, just for a minute. You want to blow us all up, Mr. Gorridge? All Mr. Bamberger would find would be teensy weensy bits of us. Every messy. What, Bamberger? Is that who's coming? Georg Bamberger? Yes, to see Mr. Miller's work. Isn't it exciting? Of course, money. Well, I never. I read an article about him last week in the Sunday paper. He's known as the mystery millionaire. He's almost completely deaf. Deaf as a post and spends most of his time indoors alone with his collection. He hardly ever goes out, except to a gallery or a private studio. Oh, that's the life. If I had money, that's just what I'd do. Collect all the china and porcelain I wanted. I've never met a millionaire before. I've always wondered if they feel different to us. I mean, their actual skins. Their skins? You, yes. I've always imagined they must be softer than ours, like like the skins of ladies when I was a girl. What's <laughs> an interesting idea. Oh, she's very fanciful, this Fernie. Real imagination. I always say she could have been a writer. Very kind of you, Mr. Corbin. You're always so generous with your compliments. <laughs> But this is by no means fancy. In my day, softness of skin was a sign of refinement. Nowadays, it's hard enough for us middle classes to keep ourselves decently clothed. 
Let alone soft. Never spoke a true word, Fanny. It's all going to the dogs, everywhere you look. Take that word you just used, refinement. That doesn't mean anything anymore. People used it once to indicate something gracious, something elegant and old. Not anymore. If you were to say the word refinement to most people today, they'd think it was something to do with sugar. That is the tragedy of our times, Mr. Green. It's such a charming word, too. Refinement. I'll tell you the truth, dear. You and I are never going to hear that word spoken properly again in our lifetime. Because no one gives a damn anymore. They haven't got a clue, and they don't give a damn. And you and I have simply got to get used to it. My father always used to say, even before the bombs came and burned our dear little house at Wendover. The game is up, my girl. We middle glasses are as dead as the dodo. Oh, poor father, how right he was. Your father was a professional man. He was a man of God, Colonel. Ah. Uh, how are those fruits coming, Dumpling? Fine, Daddy. There'll be one minute. Uh, let me help you. Very well. Ah. Right you are, Dumpling. <laughs> so, your father was a minister then? He was a saint, Colonel. I'm only thankful he never lived to see the rudeness and vulgarity of life today. You're so right, Fanny. Rudeness and vulgarity, that's it to a T. The manners of some people today are beyond belief. Honestly, did I tell you what happened in my china shop last Friday? <laughs> I don't think I did. Dear Mr. Gorinch, I don't think you did. Well, it was about a quarter to ten and I was dusting off the teapots. You know, Wedgwood collects the dust something shocking. When, when who should walk in but that Mrs. Levitt? You know, the ginger head bit I told you about. The one who thinks she's God's gift to bachelors. Here's your lemonade. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, she's got in her hand this face I told her last week. It was... A birthday present for some old geezer she's having a bit of a ding-dong with somewhere in Earl's Court. Hoping to collect all this loot when he dies, as I read the situation. I'm a pretty good judge of character, Fernie, as you know. And she's a real cross if I ever saw one. Damn it, cross! It's a blasted rocking chair. I don't remember seeing a blasted rocking chair here before. Oh yes, dear, you want to watch that. It's in pretty ropey condition. I've told Brynn about it several times. Anyway, this face. It's a nice bit of king's eye porcelain, blue and white, absolutely authentic. I'd let her have it for 60 pounds and she got infinitely the best of the bargain. No arguments about that. Well, in she prances, her hair all done up in one of those bouffant hairdos, you know. Tarty, French-like, would have looked good on a girl half her age with twice her looks. <laughs> exactly, you know the sort. And you know what she says to me. Mr. Bowen, she says, I've been cheated. No. I took this face to Bill Everett in the Portobello market, and he says it's not what you called it at all. Chinese and very rare. He says it's a piece of 20th century trash from Taiwan. Does he, I say? Does he? I keep calm. I always do when I'm mild. Yes, she says. He does. And I thank you to give me my money back. Oh, how dreadful, Mr. Goring. What did you do? I counted to ten, and then I let her have it. In the first place, I said, I don't expect... <laughs> about pottering. Do you care for porcelain yourself, Colonel? Uh, I'm afraid I don't know very much about it, madam. I like some of that Chinese stuff, though. Mm. You get some lovely colors. 
Like on that statue I saw when I came in here. Very delicate. Uh, what statue's that, Colonel? Uh, the one on the packing case, sir. Very fine. I didn't know Bryn possessed any Chinese. Well, now we've all got drinks. It's time for Daddy's regimental toast. Raise your glasses, everyone, to the 25th horse. Confusion to its enemies. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Confusion. The old 25th. Thank you, Dumpling. That was very touching of you. Very touching indeed. <laughs> Damn it, that's gin. I've got lemonade. No! <laughs> horrible, horrible. That would be alcohol, I suppose. Oh, how unpleasant. <laughs> Look, love, it's too. <laughs> The lemonade. If I get the gin, Colonel. Uh, here's your <laughs> scotch for me. <laughs> Here, Fanny. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, let's try again. Bottoms up. What? <laughs> 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 If I close up, then I close up. This is ridiculous. There was a Buddha there when I came in here. Where is it now? A Buddha? What kind of Buddha? I didn't know Brinsley had a Buddha. I don't have a Buddha! I want to keep a Buddha in this house. I'm confusion. <laughs> what the devil are you doing there? Now, don't be roused, Colonel. Remember, no naked flames. <laughs> don't be impertinent. Did you go to the pub? Uh, you certainly so it, it was close. You didn't go to the pub in that time, surely. You of couldn't course have. I did. Do it, it's five streets away, Mr. Miller. Needs must when the devil drives, madam. <laughs> Whatever the hell that was. <laughs> now look here, there's something very peculiar going on in this room. I may not know about Art Miller, but I know men. I know a liar in the light and I know one in the dark. Daddy! I don't want to doubt your word, sir. Nonetheless, I'd like your oath you went to the public house. Well? Bryn! Daddy's talking to you! What are you shouting for? <coughs> uh, yes! Yes, of course! Uh, he's absolutely right! <laughs> well, what's your answer? That was a, a very perceptive remark you made there, sir. Not everyone would have thought of that. Now look here, I've been extremely patient with you, young man, but enough is enough. It's P.E. now. Patience exhausting. <laughs> you think I'm going to let my daughter marry a born liar? You are very much mistaken. Daddy, please! Quiet, Dumpling. Let me handle this. Oh, uh, what's there to handle, sir? For God's sake! Mary! Did he say Mary? Well, that's the general idea. <laughs> you and this young lady, Bryn. Oh, what's lovingly known is engaged. A subject, of course, to Daddy's approval. Well, I never. Yeah. What a surprise! <laughs> we were keeping it a secret. Evidently. How long's this been going on then? Two months. You sly cat. <laughs> I hope you approve, Harold. You sly secretive cat! You certainly know how to keep things to yourself, don't you? Uh, Oh, I was going to tell you, Harold. Really, you were the one person I was going to tell. But you didn't. <laughs> I, I, I didn't get around to it. You chose to keep it from me. I didn't choose. I Say just no forgot. more. There's no obligation to share confidences. I've only been your neighbor for three years. I always assumed there was more than a geographic closeness between us. But I was obviously mistaken. <laughs> now, don't, don't start getting hurt. I'm not Harold. getting it's anything! Just teach me not to back on so-called friendship. It's silly me again. Silly, stupid, trusting me. Good God, man. Now, come on, Mr. Gorridge. We haven't told anybody. Not one single soul event. Really. The moment, Dumpling, there's nothing to tell. And I'm not sure there's going to be. No, Colonel. I'm afraid we've gotten off on the wrong foot, hmm? If it's my fault, 
I apologize. My father always used to say, to every human to forgive divine. <laughs> I thought that was somebody else. So many people copied him. <laughs> May I help you, Miss Vanderpool? No, thank you, Miss Melkin. Just getting myself another bit of lemon. That, that is if I may, Mr. Miller. Oh, uh, yes, of course. Help yourself. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, look here, Miller. Wherever you are. Uh, here, Colonel. I'll overlook your damn peculiar behavior this once. But understand this. My daughter is dear to me. You show me you can look after her, and I can look upon the whole situation favorably. <laughs> Can't say fairer than that, can I? No, no, sir. No, most fair. Most fair, of sir. Of course he can look after me, Daddy. His works are going to be world famous. In five years, I'll feel just like Mrs. Michelangelo. <laughs> there wasn't a Mrs. Michelangelo, actually. <laughs> there wasn't there. No, he had passionate feelings of a rather different nature. Really, Mr. <laughs> Look, Harold, if I've offended you, I'm sorry. Can't we all be friends? I don't think I can contemplate a friendly relationship with a viper. Now, really, Mr. Gorringe, it's just a case of forgive and forget it then. Is it really case? Have another Jeanette and lime. Oh, all right. Don't mind if I do. Let me mix it for you. Well, I must say, there's nothing nicer than having a booze up with a pretty girl. You haven't seen me yet. <laughs> oh, I just know it. Brinsley's always has wonderful taste. I've often said to him, you have the same taste in la ladies as I have in porcelain. <laughs> Harold, please. <laughs> Don't be silly, Bryn. Why be so modest? There's nothing to be ashamed about. If anything, it's rather flattering. I found a book where I was in this bit two years ago. And I must say, she was pretty stunning. In a blousy sort of way. <laughs> Which one was that then? Oh, I suppose she means clear. <laughs> Did you know her, Mr. Gorin? Oh, yes, dear. She's been around a long time. Has she? <laughs> oh, yes, dear. Or am I speaking out of her? Not at all, Harold. I've told Carol all about Clear. Though I must say, Harold, I'm surprised that you would call three months a long time. What was she like? Suppose you should hardly remember her, Harold. Why on earth shouldn't I? Well, since it was two years ago, I, I thought you'd forgotten. What, two years? Yes, two years! <laughs> <laughs> well, now since you mention it, I remember her perfectly. No, do I mean, she's not one who can easily be forgotten. Well, was she pretty? No, not at all. In fact, I'd say the opposite. Actually, she was rather plain. She wasn't. I'm just giving my opinion. No, you've never given it before. I was never asked. But since it's come up, I always thought she was ugly. For one thing, she had teeth like a picket fence, yellow and spiky. And for another, she had bad skin. She had nothing of the kind, she Harold. Did. I remember it perfectly. It was like new pink wallpaper with an old crumbly wallpaper underneath. <laughs> This is disgraceful. You knew I never liked her, Brinsley. She was too clever by half. And so tiresomely bohemian. You mean she was as pretentious as her name? I bet she was. The photograph I found her in showed her in a sort of sultry peasant blouse. She looked like the bartered bride done by the Lloyd's Bank Operatic Society. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you, Harold? With me? I'm, I'm sure it wasn't the Colonel. What wasn't, sir? Clear! <laughs> Clear? What? <laughs> I, I, I was just remembering her, sir. You, you all are talking the most awful nonsense about her, really. Uh, and besides, Harold, you just said that I was famous for my taste in women. No, but it's at its lapses. Oh, rubbish! Uh, she, she, was, she was beautiful, and, and kind, and, and witty, and, and charming, and, and adorable in every way. You told me she was as cozy as a steel razor blade. Did I? Uh, sure not. <laughs> that doesn't sound like me. You said to me in this room when I asked you what she was like. She was a painter, very honest, very clever, and just about as cozy as... She has a steel razor blade! So what? 
So bloody what? So nothing. But boys in touch, I don't know the meaning of the word. What's all this talk about her being so kind and tender uh, all of a sudden? Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, she could be, on occasion. Very. Very rare occasions, I imagine. Uh, not so rare. Not so rare at all. Meaning what exactly? Presley, I'm talking to you! Go up to the bedroom. I'll explain everything there. Just come. Now, do you think this is quite the moment? <laughs> in the bedroom, dear. For what purpose, I can't begin to imagine. They're going to do some more of that plotting, I dare say. What is it, darling? Has something gone wrong? Uh, it's all back, every piece. You mean we can have lights? Yes. Uh, no, no, no. Why not? Never mind. Why do you push me in the bedroom? No, don't go away. Oh, Tommy! I, I didn't mean that. Yeah. There you are, they are plotting again. Brinsley, what are you doing up there? Uh, nothing, Colonel. I, I, actually, I, I just remembered. I, I keep a flashlight under the bed to, uh, to, uh, blind the burglars with. <laughs> you do have another drink, Colonel. What do you mean another? I haven't had one yet. Oh, poor Colonel. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get you one. <laughs> Let me give you another lemonade. No, no, thank you, Colonel. I'll manage myself. <laughs> so, this is your version of a blind date. What the hell is going on? Nothing. Gail Bamberger is only coming tonight to see my work, and we've had the main views. That's is that all. the reason for this furtive clutching? I can't explain things at the moment, that's all. But who's that frightful girl? If you must know, it's Carol. Uh, I've told you all about her. The idiot's dead. She's a very sweet girl. In fact, we've become very good friends this past six weeks. But how good? Just good. And have you become friends with a father, too? If it's any of your business, they've just come round to see Bamberger, that's all. Come on! What was it you wanted to tell me on the phone tonight? Nothing. <laughs> I'm your lying. <laughs> Clea, if you ever loved me, just slip away quietly, and I'll come round later and I'll explain everything, I promise. Let's go. I don't believe you. Darling, please. Please, just do this. Please. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, last, decent glass of scotch. Are you getting your lemonade? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm wondering if this Bamberger fellow is ever going to show up. He's a half hour late already. <laughs> That's nothing, Ken. <laughs> Millionaires are always late. It's their thing. I'm sure you're right, Mr. Goring. That's how I always imagine them. Hands like silk and always two hours late. <laughs> <laughs> no one in the world. Oh, I miss you badly, Bryn. I have to see you. I thought of nothing else the past six weeks. I made the most awful mistake walking out. Clear? Please. I mean, we've known each other for four years. We can't throw each other away like old newspapers. I don't see why not. You've read my politics. You know my gossip. You've certainly been through all my entertainment section. <laughs> How about the second edition? Darling, we simply can't talk about this right now. That's all. Now, can you please just, just trust me for an hour? Just, just one hour. Of course I can, darling. You don't want me down there. No. Very well, then I'll get undressed and go to bed quietly. And when you're rid of them all, I'll be waiting. <laughs> That's a terrible idea. I think it's a marvelous idea. Well, it will have a relaxation for the both of us. I'm perfectly relaxed. Ridley! Two songs a day for two weeks a night. Come not in darkness, come not in light. That's me, isn't it? Uh, of course not, darling. I, I just can't explain things right now. Okay. Then you can explain later, in bed. <laughs> Look, Clea, I, I told you no. Not tonight. Either that, or I come downstairs and discover your sword and little secret. There is no sword and secret. Then you won't mind my being done. Brinsley! Okay. Stay here. But, but, but be quiet. Black Mary, witch. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, my sweet. What are you doing up there? You've been an eternity. I was just looking in the bathroom, my darling. You never know what you might find in that clever little cabinet. <laughs> are you trying to madden me, sir? Are you trying to put me into a fury, sir? There's certainly not, sir. <laughs> I warn you, Miller, it's not difficult. My furies are not unknown, sir. I may sing. D I may knock your teeth in. What did you say? Ray, how dare you talk to Daddy like that? No, 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 no. I, I wasn't talking to Daddy like that. Then who were you talking to? No one. Uh, myself. <laughs> I, was, I was talking to myself. I, I was saying to myself, if you keep groping about in the dark up there like that, you may knock your teeth in. <laughs> <laughs> Mad. Mad. It's the only explanation. You've got yourself engaged to a lunatic. <laughs> There's something going on up there, Brinsley, and I'm coming up to find out what it is. Do you hear me? To Carol? No. I'm not such a fool as you take me for. I know when you're hiding something, your voice goes on to sea. Very, very foxy pets. Don, certainly the colonel wouldn't approve of a young lady entering a man's bedroom in the dark. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm coming up, Brinsley. I'm coming Oh. I'm coming down, no. Carol! I'm coming no. down right now! Oh, please! Mr. Miller? I promise was arranged. My God! It's Bamberger! Bamberger? Yes, Bamberger! You no. must have thought I was never coming. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not at all, sir. I'm delighted you could spare the time. I know how busy you are, but I'm afraid we've had the most idiotic disaster. We've Blown a fuse. You'll have to speak up, dear. He's stone deaf. Sorry. We've had a fuse, but, but, uh, it's not exactly the best conditions for seeing sculpture. Not to worry. Here. Oh, what a relief. <laughs> you always carry a torch with you, sir. Mostly, yes. It helps to see details. <laughs> you are holding a private view. Uh, no, these are just a few of my friends. Uh, hmm. okay. uh, may I present to you uh, Colonel Melkett. A great honor, sir! <laughs> no, no, mine, mine. And Miss Carol Melkett. I say hello! So glad you got here! It's terribly kind of you to take such an interest! Enchanted. <laughs> Uh, a neighbor of mine, Harold Gorin. How do you? Very honored, I'm sure. Enchanted. I must say, it's a real thrill meeting you. And that's about it. Uh, oh, uh, Miss Furnival, another neighbor. We've been taking refuge from the storm, as it were. <laughs> it is true. They are softer, much, much softer. Softer, please. Miss Vanable, please. Uh, excuse me, uh, why are you all shouting at me? I'm not deaf. You told me he was. I bet he was. My father was. Uh, a misunderstanding, uh, that's all. I love your outfit. And where did you get that smart little cap? My cap? Yes, it is. So chic, wildly original. But surely you have seen them before. We all have them. You mean it's some kind of club? Ooh. I bet it's very exclusive. <laughs> oh yes, absolutely impossible to get in. It is easier for a rich man to go through the eye of a needle than for a capital to enter heaven. <laughs> Ready? Oh, Christ! What? The sofa! Oh. We'd forgotten about the sofa. Mm -hmm. Get that bloody torch away from him. Go! <laughs> Excuse me, but I am pressed for time. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> oh, God, in Imol. Is that one of yours? Uh, yes. It's amazing. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, do you really think so? Ah, no, but definitely. I see at once what it represents. You do? Ah, no question. The two needles of man's unrest. Self-love 
and self-hate, leading to the same point. I'm right, aren't I? Oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, it's easy to see that you're an expert, sir. Ah, uh, but nine, nine. Let's try an experiment. Hmm? Uh, I would love for you to feel it in the dark. The dark? Uh, yes, it, I meant that piece to be felt, not see. It's part of my theory that I call, uh, that I uh, call factual tactility. Yes, if it doesn't stab you to the quick, it's not art. Darling, please relieve our distinguished guest of his torch so he can try this for himself. Hmm? Oh, yes, of course. Now, stretch out your arms and, and, and feel it all over. With passion. That's a trick. Total commitment. Ah, oh, wunderbar. Impaled here in the dark, one can feel the vital trust of the argument. The anguish of our times. It has real moral force. I feel the passionate embrace of similarities to create an orgasm of opposites. <laughs> Super! <laughs> you should charge immense sums for work such as this, Mr. Miller. This one, for example, how much is this? Uh, that was good. Five hundred <laughs> guineas. Uh, well, <laughs> would you like it then? Certainly, if I had it. <laughs> 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 You mean you've gone broke? <laughs> no. I mean I never had it. Now, look, I know millionaires are supposed to be eccentric. Uh, Daddy! Millionaires? But who do you think I am? Damn it, man. You must know who you are. Look, Mr. Badberger, mm. is there some kind of joke you like to uh, play? Uh, excuse me, but that is not my name. Yeah, it isn't? No. My name is Shupanzi. Franz Emanuel Schupanzi, born in Weimar, 1905, a student of philosophy at Heidelberg, 1934, refugee to this country, 1938, regular employment ever since with the London Electricity Board. Electricity? Do you mean you're not of Mr. Bell? he's uh. not. But who did you imagine I was? How dare you? Please. Of all the nerve, coming in here, giving us a lecture on orgasms, and all the time you're simply here to lend a few. I agree with you, sir. It's monstrous. It is? You come in here, a public servant, pretending to be deaf, and proceed to harangue your employers on that and uninvited. Excuse me, but I was invited. Don't answer back. My day, you would have been fired on the spot for impertinence. Daddy's absolutely right. Ever since the Beatles, the lower classes think they can behave exactly as they want. <laughs> Miller, will you kindly show this fella his work? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, why don't you? Right down in the cellar. All right, where is it? I'll do it. Come on, down you go. Come on, let's move on. All right, so, oh, farewell. I leave the light of art for the dark of science. Let's have a little bit less of your lips, shall we? Look Happening. Cheer up, darling. In a few minutes, everything will be all right. Uh, Mr. Bamberger will arrive in the light. He'll adore your work and give you twenty thousand pounds for your whole collection. Oh yes. And then we can buy a super little house and live what's lovingly known as happily ever after. I want to leave this place just as soon as we're married. <laughs> what's the matter with you? The gods listen, darling. They've given me a terrible night so far. They made you worse. I know, darling. You've had a filthy evening. Poor babykins. But I'll fight them with you. I don't care a fig for those naughty old gaudy pegs. Do you hear? Not a single little fig! Now, uh, what is it? Don't be stupid. Someone else here. Good Lord! Who's there? 
Come on, I know you're there. Uh, I, I, I bet you it's just, uh, it's just M Mrs. Punnett. Who? <laughs> Mrs. Punnett, the cleaning lady. She comes here every Friday. But damn it, man, it's 10 o'clock. She can't be that conscientious, not from what you told me. No, uh, but she is, Harold. <laughs> you haven't met her. You, you can't imagine how, how devoted she is. In fact, just the other night, she came in here at around midnight because she couldn't sleep to think of how dirty the place might be. She's very discreet. But when did she come? She must have just slipped in and upstairs without our hearing. She actually wears special swans down slippers to keep the noise to a minimum. Well. Let's just see if it's her then, shall we? No, 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 she doesn't like to be disturbed. Mrs. So. Punnett? Oh, really? Mrs. Punnett, is that you? Mrs. Punnett! Hello? <laughs> yes? Mrs. Punnett, what on earth are you doing up there? Just giving your bedroom a bit of a tidy, sir. At this time of night? I'm afraid I was delayed, but better late than never, sir, as they say. I know how you like your bedroom to be nice and inviting when you're giving one of your parties. When did you come, madam? Just a few minutes ago, sir. I didn't want to disturb you, so I came up here. But I can't seem to find the light. It's as dark as a Newgate's knocker. Are you playing one of your kinky games, Mr. Miller? No. <laughs> no, I'm not, Mrs. Punnett. We've had a fuse. The man is mending it now. Oh, a fuse! Mm -hmm. I thought you might be playing one of your kinky games in the dark. <laughs> it is a fuse, Mrs. Punnett. The lights should be on any minute. Well, that'll be a relief for you, won't it? <laughs> Of course, but uh, I'm afraid there's nothing you can do here tonight. You might as well go on home now, Mrs. Bonnet. Are you sure of that, sir? I'd like to, really. I could clean this place with me eyes shut. I'd hate to have your guest here as it usually is. Bras and panties in the seat, gym balls on the floor. Please watch what you say, madam. You may not know it, but you're in the presence of Mr. Miller's fiance. <laughs> fiance? Yes, and I am her father. Oh, well, I never miss Mr. Miller. Uh, I, was, I was keeping it a surprise. Oh, how lovely. May I kiss you, sir, please? Yes. Yes, uh, of course. Oh, I'm so pleased for you. <laughs> and you miss, too. Thank you. And for you, too, sir. Thank you. You must be Miss Cleo's father. Miss Cleo? I don't understand. Well, you finally got my last. Well done, Miss Cleo. I never thought you would, not after four years. No, 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 no! Oh, forgive me, sir, if I'm speaking at a turn, but you have to admit you did take a long time proposing. Four years. It's a long time to be caught in one woman. Mrs. Bonnet, please. Four years? Well, yes, dear, it's been all of that and a bit more, hasn't it? And it's about time, really. It's getting a bit prominent with your little bun in the oven. No! Oh, <laughs> oh well, to me, that's why you proposed. Of course it's not. He's always been stuck on you. He told me so not one week ago in this room. <clears throat> Mrs. Pornet, he says, Mrs. Pornet, as far as I'm concerned, you can keep the rest of them. Miss Cleo will always be the top of the heap for me. <laughs> oh, I says, but what about that debutante, Miss Carol? The Colonel's daughter, the one you've been telling me about. <laughs> oh, ah, uh, he says. She's just a bit of Knightsbridge candy floss. A couple of licks and you've had her. <laughs> did, did you say four years, madam? Yes, Colonel, four years in this room. I know that voice. That's clear. Clear? Clear? I don't understand anything that's going on in this room. <laughs> I know, Colonel, it's like a magic dark room. Everything happens the wrong way round. The rain falls indoors, the daily comes at night, and in one second turns from nice maid into nastiness. Don't oh, shut up, for God's sake! Oh, at last, one real word of protest. Have you finished lying, then? Have you had your last crumb of humble pie? 
Oh, you coward, you glutty coward! Just because you didn't want to marry me doesn't mean you have to settle for this lot! Marry? Marry? Four years of meaning to end in this triviality, Miss Laughingly known as Aunt and Dirty Peg! Stop it, for God's sake! How would you suggest I did that? Well, where's all that bloody resource you keep talking about? Now, there, there, darling. Everything's going to be all right. Dar there, hold my hand. That's it. Now, everything's going to be all right. Are you sure that your daughter sent your holding, Colonel? What? Carol, isn't this your hand? No. You must have lived with your daughter for well over 20 years, Colonel, and what a remarkable use you've made of your eyes. All right, my kinky game. Let's all play Guess the Hand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or would you rather play Guess the Teeth, Harold? Who's got teeth like a pig in bed? How disgusting. <laughs> well, that's me, dear. I'm Queen Disgusty Pigs. <laughs> all right, who's this? I don't know. Guess. I don't know, and I don't care. Oh, go on, have a go. It's Bryn, of course. You can't trick me like that. It's Brinsley, stupid hand. I'm afraid you're wrong. It's me. It's not. You're lying. I'm not. I don't believe You're that. lying! You're lying! I'm not! <laughs> All right, you try, Harold. I'm not playing. It's a bloody silly game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's brave. <laughs> <laughs> How does he know that? How does he know you had and I don't? Uh, Carol, calm down. No, answer me. I want to know. <laughs> I want. Uh, you're getting hysterical. Leave me alone. No. I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> said you never wanted to see me again. I never saw you at all, Brinsley. How could you be walked out on? You should live in the dark. It's your natural element. Whatever that means. 
It means you don't really want to be seen. Why is that, Brinsley? Are you afraid if someone really saw you, they would never really love you? Oh, go away, really. I you... want to know. And yes, yes, you always want to know. Pick, pick, pick away. But why is it you do that, Clear? Hmm? Have you ever stopped to think about that? Perhaps because I care about you. Ugh. Perhaps there's nothing to care about. Just a fake artist. Oh, stop pitting yourself. That's always your vice. I told you when I met you, you could either be a good artist or a chic fake. You didn't like it because I refused to give you the applause. And Lord knows you certainly did that. Is that what she gives you? 20 hours of ego massage every day? Yeah, at least our relationship isn't a replica of the Holy Inquisition. We didn't have an affair. We just had four years of nookie with Torquemada. And don't say you didn't enjoy it. Enjoy it? I hated every second of it. Yes, I remember. Every second. I recall. The day you left for Finland was the happiest day of my life. Mine too. I sighed with relief. So did I. I went out dancing that very night. So did I. I was out with the liar and the timber. Oh, good. That's very good then. Fine. Super. Dupa. It's lovely to see you looking so happy. You two radiant with, with self-fulfillment. <laughs> <laughs> self-fulfillment. <laughs> no doubt this is very funny to you two. It is, quite actually. I'm not so easily amused, however, madam. And now look, Colonel, it's really not Hold what Hold your tongue, sir. I'm talking. Do you know what would have happened to a young man like you in my day who dared treat a girl the way you have treated my dumpling? <laughs> I, I assume, Colonel, that is something would... I Hold your tongue, sir. I'm talking. Oh, mm. Leave it, Daddy. Let's just go home. Quiet, dumpling. Kindly leave this to me. Uh, Carol, uh, look, I can explain everything, well, really. What the hell do you explain? The whole time you were going with me, she was in the background. That's all there is to it. What were you doing? Weighing us up? Here. What? Your ring. Take the bloody thing back. Oh, <laughs> oh my! My dog died! Very droll indeed. Love you, Phil. Who asked you a question? <laughs> Do you know what would have happened to a young lad like you in my day? Uh, happened, sir? You'd have been thrashed, sir. Thrashed? Thrashed? You'd have felt the mark of a father's horsewhip across your seducer's shoulders. Yo, would I, sir? You would have raised your gutter snipe voice in a piteous scream for mercy and forgiveness. <laughs> You villain! You scumbling, conniving little villain! Have you seen the state of my room? My room? My lovely room. The most elegant and cared for in the entire district. One chair turned absolutely upside down. One chair on top of another like a portobello junk shop. And that's not all, is it, Prinsley? Who oh, no! That's not all. Long shop. Long don't play innocent with me. I thought I had a friend living here all these years. I didn't know I was living opposite a stinking little thief. This is my reward, isn't it? After years of looking at you, because you're too much of a slob to do it for yourself, to have my best pieces stolen from me to impress your new girlfriend and her daddy. Where's my sofa? My ear blades to will share's lounge. Behind the curtain. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yes. 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 Don't yes. speak another word. You no, and that no, little no. nit can carry it back to my rooms right now. Okay. Any other bits you've taken. It's the end of our relationship, Brinsley. Doubt if we should be speaking again. <laughs> I'm going to have to smash you, Brinsley. Uh, now, study on, Harold. Really, it, it's, it could be... Oh, yes. I think I'm going to have to smash you. Smash for smash. That's fair to do. Smash for smash! <laughs> no, 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 you're going crazy, Harold. Really, you put that down. Well done, sir. I think it's time to... Harold, you've always had civilized instincts. I appeal to you. 
Don't join the army. Get him, Daddy. Get him. Terrible. Get him. 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 Damn it. Quiet. <laughs> You're able to hear them breathing. Good idea. It's tea. Smart tactics. <laughs> God, it's the electrician. Hello, please. Oh, what the devil are you doing up here? Have you mended the fuse? Are you going to keep us in the dark all night? Don't worry. The fuse is mended. <laughs> Thank God for that. Hello, please. Mr. Miller, where are you? Why this darkness? Is a joke, yes? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> that is not very funny, good people. Just because I'm a foreigner <laughs> to imitate my voice? <laughs> you English can be the rudest people on earth. Mr. Miller, I've come to give attention to your sculpture. Got in him! Got in him! Oh my god, it's Bamberger! Bamberger? Bamberger. Uh, uh, don't be afraid, Mr. Bamberger. Uh, uh, we found a fuse, but it's mended now. Mr. Miller? You'll have to speak up, he's deaf. Uh, we've had a fuse, but, but everything's all right now. <laughs> uh, it, it is all right. Everything is all right, now, just in the nick of time. So, <laughs> here's an end to your troubles, good people. Like Jehovah in his sacred testament. I give you the most miraculous gift of the creation. Light. Light. Thank God. I wouldn't thank him too soon, Brinsley, if I were you. No would I, Brinsley, if I were you. No would I, Brinny Poo, if I were you. Then take me. <laughs> for I shall play God for this second. Attend all of you. God said, let there be light. And there was good people. Suddenly, astoundingly, instantaneously, inconceivably, inexhaustibly, inextinguishably, and eternally, light. Oh. 